In this video, we derive the integrated rate law for a first order reaction. Okay, so suppose that we have a reaction with one reagent that is A to the P. Uh, we can write the rate law simply as this. K to the A to a power of X, but the assumption here is that we have uh, carried out experiments to determine the reaction order, and we have discovered that this reaction is first order. Okay, so the way that we write this is that x is equal to 1, and that means this, re this reaction will be first order, or for convenience, we may just uh, omit this and simply write this. Now, uh, we also know that the definition of the rate is simply the speed at which uh, reagents are transformed into products, the speed at which the concentration changes. All right, so we know as well that the rate has this definition. So uh, if we equate these two expressions, we will come up with a differential expression for how the concentration of A changes on time. Okay, so we can do the following. This is going to be equal to the rate that we obtain from the rate law. Okay, this is a differential expression that we can integrate to obtain an explicit dependence of the concentration of A as a function of time, and that is going to be very useful because it will allow us to predict uh, uh, how exactly the functional form uh, uh, for the dependence uh, of the concentration of reagent on time, how fast it will disappear. Okay, so we simply have to integrate this expression, and as always, we start with separating variables. We group concentrations uh, in the left hand side of the expression, and this is going to be the uh, following concentration of A, and then time to the right hand side of the expression, uh, K differential of T. For convenience, we can change the signs. We can make this a positive sign and then a negative sign, and then we can, we're ready to integrate. Okay, so we can integrate this from the uh, start of the reaction where the concentration of A is equal to uh, A sub naught to any time during the reaction where the concentration of A will be anything. And then we can integrate the uh, left hand side of the expression uh, for time from the start of the reaction until a time t that we may be interested in. Now this integration uh, is going to have here a constant times the differential, so uh, the constant comes, uh, factors out, uh, or integrates out, and you have that this is going to be equal uh, uh, to that integral from time zero to time t, and that is what we have to uh, solve for. Okay, the right hand side of this integral is very simple, it's exactly identical to what we have seen in uh, zero of order reactions in a prior video and that is simply going to be equal to minus k multiplied by t. Now, the left-hand side of the integral is going to be equal to the natural log of a, okay? Then we have to evaluate from um, the start of the reaction where the concentration is a naught to any time t where the concentration will be a. Okay, so uh, that integration uh, or that uh, evaluation of the limits is going to be equal to the natural log of a minus the natural log of A naught, which is the same thing as the natural log of the ratio of those two concentrations. Okay, so that evaluation is going to give me uh, the following natural log of the concentration of A over the natural log of the concentration of A at time zero is equal to minus K sub T. Okay, so uh, we can uh, try to represent this and, and this is actually how uh, uh, we have a functional dependence of the concentration of A on time uh, but this would not be very useful because we actually have uh, not the concentration of A, we have uh, the natural log of the concentration of A. Something a little bit more useful to be, will be to actually to solve this expression for the concentration of A so that we can compare it directly to other orders like zeroth order, uh, which we have done in a prior video, or second order, which we will do in a future video. Okay, so uh, we can solve for A uh, by simply, simply uh, exponentiating this e to the minus kt, and finally uh, we can solve further for a, and this is going to give us the following a naught. Let me actually rewrite it right here. Concentration of a is going to be equal to the concentration of a at time zero, e to the minus kt. Okay, so now we do have an explicit dependence of the concentration of a as a function of time. These two expressions are exactly identical, okay? 
this is a little simpler uh, to understand. It gives you the uh, dependence of the concentration as a function of time, and it's easier to compare to other orders. Uh, this one might be a little bit uh, easier to use. Okay, so we can actually represent this. And uh, when you do that, the concentration of A as a function of time, this is an exponential dk. Okay, so when time is zero, you will have that this is equal to the concentration of A naught. But then after the reaction starts, then the concentration falls in an exponential manner. Okay, that way. Now, this is different than what happens if this was a zeroth order reaction where the variation of the concentration of reagent with time would be perfectly linear, not exponential. Okay, so this gives you a little indication for how the order of a reaction actually affects uh, uh, the time change of that concentration. It's quite different for, for a zeroth order reaction uh, than for a first order reaction. Okay? First order reactions are quite common. Uh, uh, most uh, uh, unimolecular process, for example, isomerizations, tend to be first order. Okay? In the next video, we're going to be talking about the half-life, which is something that is very useful in the context of first order reactions. And then we will continue to talk about uh, the integrated rate law for a second order reaction.